Okay, all of the forces of the universe, I swear it, are totally against me doing this video right now. So if you see my dog running past me, my cats jumping in front of the camera and hitting me, or anything else, please disregard it because I need to get this out, I need to get this set. Hi, I'm Alma, welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to talk to you about my journey and how I got from point A to point B. It's not going to be all in one video. I will be doing this in chunks and parts. Today I'm going to talk about hospitals and growing up in a hospital type environment constantly going back and forth because I live in a small town and the closest hospital that understood what needed to be done and had the resources to do what needed to be done was four hours away, like a four hour drive, which for my mom was an eight hour bus ride with two kids. So God love that woman. I tell you, God love her for what she did for us. Um, Cause not only did she have to go the eight hour bus drive, bus ride to Calgary for mine. She also had to go the opposite direction and go to Vancouver for my sister because Vancouver had more resources than Calgary did at the time for the job, which my sister needed because she needed her jaw broken so that it was actually straight. I lucked out and didn't need the jaw reconstruction. Um, so, first off, hospitals. I am no stranger to a hospital. I spent a good portion of my early childhood in them. I remember yelling and arguing with the nurses because Back in those days when the TV guide was in one specific channel, the one nurse would not let me go to that channel to find the show that I wanted to watch. Because um, I was trying to find the channel that Sailor Moon was on because their channel listings in Calgary were different from the channel listings here. And oh my goodness, it was just like uh, a mess. I could not figure out for the life of me what channel Sailor Moon was on, and that is all I wanted to watch. Um, so, today, the topic is operations. And I have had countless operations. I don't even know how many. I have one specific operation that has stuck in my memory, because it is the one, the only one I had within my cognitive memory. And that operation was to, I, I believe, get everything back into place and get the metal plate put back in, uh, put into my head and, you know, make sure everything was round and cosmetically pleasing to the eye. Um, I still have the flat face, so you'll see it's not you know, all curvy like a pretty face, but you know what? It's my face. Um, so I have the scar here. Don't know if you can see it or not. I'm trying to let you see it, but it's right in here. And yes, it goes from ear to ear with little bits of it zigzagging up on top of my, my head. The zigzag was for two purposes. One, it stopped the scar from puckering because it gave it a larger surface area to stitch up and all of that jazzy stuff. And two, it kept the skull, um, kept the incision in place a little better so that if I moved, it didn't like tear apart and all that jazzy stuff as well. Um, this operation left me out of school for a good portion of the year. I don't know exactly how long I was out. I remember it being March, because the snow was thawing. So I remember March being the time that I went back to school. But I don't remember when I left. I wasn't the type of kid to pay attention to the times of the year and the days and all of that. I just, you know, I lived one day at a time 
I still live one day at a time. I couldn't even tell you today what day it was if it wasn't a friend's birthday. Um, so, while in this hospital, there was a, there were other kids who had their same issue or their issues, whether it be, you know, same as me or some heart failure type problems or just other things that needed operating on as well. Um, the hospital that I was in was sectioned off into clusters, but there was a big communal area as well that you could go and converse and, you know, meet other kids that were in the same boat you were in. In this regard, I never felt alone. I had someone that I could talk to. We would mention, you know, we would ask each other, why are you in here? Why are you in here? And, but it was always left at, why are you in here? Okay, let's go read a book. Or, okay, let's go play Super Mario Brothers. I, in most ways, felt more at home and more accepted in that hospital environment than I ever did out of it. I wish I had something profound to tell people about my journey, but I don't really think that I was, or I had that extraordinary of an upbringing. I went to hospitals and I was at home. I want anybody else cranial differences or whose kids have cranial differences to know that life does continue on. Something that you learn to work with, just like everybody else has their issues. People learn how to work through depression. So it's part of who I am, but it's not all of that. It's not all of who you are. So please, please reach out to somebody and tell them if you're feeling hurt or vulnerable or you just need a cup of tea. I'm, I am here to talk. I will answer any questions you have, if you have any questions for me, um, as best as I can. Like I said, this is my journey and I will not denote you yours. Thank you for listening today. I uh, hope you've learned something. And if you have any questions for me, please put them down in the comments below. Or you can find me on Twitter. I am at Alma Grandberg. Or I am at Alma Love Books. So that's it.